the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Write this down very quickly. Levels of satanic influences. Very powerful truth you are about to learn. There are three levels of satanic influences over the saints as revealed from scripture. Three levels, principally. Number one, are you ready? Number one is called witchcraft. The first level of satanic influence over the saints is called witchcraft. Galatians chapter 3, please, and verse 1. Let's hurry up for sake of time. Galatians 3 verse 1 all foolish Galatians he says who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus had been seen evidently set forth crucified among you now please look up the Bible's idea of witchcraft is not drinking blood and eating flesh those are just extended meanings the Bible's idea of witchcraft is not going to a coven in the night and having a meeting. I'm not negating those things, but I'm telling you that the standard definition of witchcraft from the Bible has nothing to do with any of these things. Witchcraft, according to Bible definition, is anything that can cause you to err using the tool of deception. That is witchcraft. Causing a man to err. Causing a man to go out of alignment using the tool of deception is the Bible's definition of witchcraft. The first way that Satan influences men is through witchcraft. That means he uses the tool of deception to cause you to err. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, commit the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Notice every time there is witchcraft, you see that there is deviation from the truth. There is disobedience in it. What is witchcraft? I wrote here to cause you to think to act and to talk in error using the tool of deception what is witchcraft again to cause you to think to cause you to act and to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception second peter chapter 2 we'll read from verse 1 and 2 second peter chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 very quickly but there are false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction last verse verse 2 and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of this is the character of witchcraft the practice of witchcraft does not have to do with some crude african type activity even though there is an expression of it like that but principally Engaging the tool of deception 
to cause you to think to act and to speak in ways that are inconsistent with God's ways is witchcraft so the first demonic influence that Satan has over men if allowed is witchcraft number two are you ready the second is called manipulation and control of your mind manipulation and control of your mind please start that one because this is where even when you are saved i'm going to be answering the question whether the christians can be possessed or not manipulation and control of your mind this one is principally in the realm of the mind your mind containing your will your emotions and your intellect matthew chapter 16 from verse 22 and 23 matthew 16 22 and 23 remember the discussion between jesus and peter jesus was talking about his dying and the bible says peter took him who took him peter one of the chief disciples of jesus he took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not happen to you 23 but he turned he being jesus and said unto peter get thee behind me satan thou art an offense unto me for thou severest not the things that be of god and those that be of men you want to find the account that he said satan has desired to sift you go to luke 22 we'll read 31 and 32 synoptic account same message the lord said luke 22 31 and 32 the lord said simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat 32 but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren satan came to manipulate the compassion like i've taught you of peter to stop jesus from dying jesus was talking about his death and to peter he did not know this was a man who it was not long after, i mean that he had said i know who thou art thou art the christ the son of the living god next moment jesus is telling him get thee behind me satan number three the third level of satanic influence the third level of satanic influence over the saints is called possession or over men really possession this talks of complete influence and control of your spirit mind and body possession complete influence and control of your spirit your mind and your body demons can use satan can use witchcraft next level manipulation and control of your mind third level complete possession influence and control of your spirit your mind your mental faculties and your body mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings. Let's follow closely now. He's teaching us that it is possible for demons to completely possess a man. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tomb are you seeing the character of that man now and no man could bind him unusual power no not with chains verse 4 because that when he had often when he had been often bound with fetters and chains the chains had been plucked asunder by him can a normal man easily do that you see that now and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs doing what crying and cutting himself with stones this is the standard character of demonic possession 
that this man is hurting himself with stones and yet he cannot stop because his spirit his mental faculties and sadly his body is under total control and influence of such a spirit when jesus saw when he saw jesus afar off we're about to learn some lessons now he ran and worshiped him i ask you again does satan know that jesus is lord he's about to negotiate a deal because when he saw jesus he knew that means every time demons see people who understand their authority they know he saw jesus and he knew and he came and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high look at that kind of intelligence i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not do you know what this means i use the father's authority that you submit to to plead with you i know you are obedient to the father and remember he's kind and he's loving don't torment us look at satan for jesus had said come out of the man thou unclean spirit now i love jesus and he asked him what is your name and the man answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he should not send them away from the country are you seeing now territorial construct of these spirits that means okay since we are going to leave the man it looks like that negotiation is not working please do us a favor can you command that we just come out of him and look for someone within the territory because based on our structure this is our territory verse 11 now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding and the devils besought him and said i will teach you why demons want bodies send us into the swine that we may enter into them do you know what lesson hold on please go back go back go back to verse 12. how many of you know that gadara had so many human beings and yet the demons are begging it took us a long time to prepare this body to host us i thought they would live and just enter anybody satan does not have that kind of power to just enter anyhow it takes a lot there are processes he's telling them that even though there are men as it is right now the urgency of wanting a body when are we going to meet a man deceive him manipulate him until we gain entrance let us go to peaks why will satan have men scattered in the in the decapolis and yet look for one man because there are rules of engagement i told you even jesus knocks to enter your life so when you see it look like satan can just get into any life anyhow it is a lie from adam and eve and from this madman the demons are pleading we want to leave but there are rules of engagement we are not just going to enter anybody and remember these guys that he's afraid of entering are not born again because jesus had not died and yet he still could not enter them send us to peaks that we may enter into them 13 and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep can you see that exactly what was happening to the man before was now happening to the pigs so it was not the bodies it was the influences that was behind it are we together now the bible says they ran down to a steep place there were about two thousand look at how that man was suffering what came out from him entered two thousand pigs and all of them could not control themselves yet one man was carrying that imagine the pain that that man was going through let's finish we're reading to 16 14 now verse 14 and they that fed the swine and they that fed the swine fled 
and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what was that that was done verse 15 and when they come to jesus they see that the man who was possessed with the devil and had a legion they saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind we discussed that last week that immediately after the deliverance you thought the man would go away but the next thing that happened after deliverance was that he was with jesus he did not leave jesus next week we'll be looking at the three levels of deliverance that number one the spirit influences were cast number two he was with jesus he remained with jesus and he sat down there and his remaining with jesus was doing something to his mind his right mind and they were afraid last verse and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine now can a christian be possessed with demons the answer is no a christian cannot be possessed with demons the reason is because of the very character of the administration of eternal life that eternal life demands that you are joined to christ and the bible says he that is joined to christ is one spirit but this is the balance just because a christian cannot be possessed does not mean satan does not have an activity that a believer can be a victim of the first two that i listed witchcraft and manipulation and control it does not matter how born again that believer is the cure for witchcraft and the cure for manipulation and control is not just being born again it's putting on the whole armor of god i will teach you that one are you seeing now there are many many believers that are saved and yet will be victims of this why Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened not having their salvation lost having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a Christian cannot be possessed but he can be demonized manipulated and controlled at the solical realm absolutely here is where we need to balance in the body of christ and most of you know that i love the body of christ i'm sent to the body of christ but let us not give the devil the authorization to prey on our ignorance satan came to jesus holy jesus righteous jesus blameless jesus he came to him spoke with him it took it is written it did not take jesus being the word to be saved it didn't take jesus being born of the word to be saved from that deception it took him having knowledge and replying back it is written and get thee behind me two things that saved jesus it is written and get thee behind me understanding of scripture and understanding of authority are we learning now so the whole idea that just because you are saved automatically satan has nothing to do with your life it's a lie it's not true i can tell you by the authority of scripture it is not true the disciples the apostles they continue to tell you how that satan would come and attempt to challenge them challenge their minds challenge their body and they continue to stand with the operation of the word of god when jesus entered the temple and preached and rebuked spirits the people did not show any evidence that they had any spirit at work in them it was when he gave the command hallelujah three levels of satanic influences witchcraft through deception manipulation and control largely in the realm of your mind and then complete possession influencing your spirit influencing your mind and influencing your body now having put down all of these things in our discussion what then is deliverance what is deliverance exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 
what exactly is deliverance and the lord said exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and i have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows please read verse 8 with me ready read and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites i am come down to deliver them take note to take them out and to bring them in to take them out and to bring them in scripture number two colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins recall that i've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of god and man number one there is the prophetic dimension realities from god's standpoint that every time god speaks he speaks from a realm that is finished and number two there is the experiential manifestation of that which god intended happening in time two dimensions when you read the bible you will see god establish certain things for instance none shall say in zion i am sick for instance we've been delivered not we have been not there is deliverance going on we are delivered it is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest are we together now you have to understand this write this down please what is deliverance i was going through the notes that i made last time i was doing mystery of deliverance and i saw this definition i worked on it a bit but it's a powerful definition listen carefully generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking this is just a general idea the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance also means salvation deliverance also means salvation generally speaking deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger evil let me define deliverance proper now deliverance i wrote here is the scriptural strategy deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing i will take it very slowly because i don't want you to miss anything here as long as it is obtain grace to write it there is victory in that sentence are we together deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ let me stop there so you write deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory 
and authority of Jesus Christ the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces come on over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer if we're together say amen. amen now listen as I read it without breaking you've been writing I want you to hear now deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially manifest establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer write this down deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare please don't be tired of writing deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing underline establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it second corinthians 2 and verse 4 that means deliverance and then it extends to spiritual warfare for the believer in christ our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory is engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ do you understand this now it's important to get this definition it will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan so you are not sure whether you win you just fight and watch as it happens that is not scriptural that will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated for the believer our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan over demons principalities and powers second Corinthians 2 14 2 Corinthians 2 14 1 4 do we have that now thanks be unto God let's read together now thanks be unto God which caused us to triumph where in Christ not by our ability in Christ and make it manifest that's right the savor of this knowledge by us in every place now thanks be to God who causes us to triumph we triumph but there is one who causes us to triumph the Bible calls him Christ Jesus first Corinthians 15 57 first Corinthians 15 57 let's read together again ready one to read but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ shout amen. amen but thanks be to God which giveth us giveth us the victory so when it has to do with deliverance your concern is not fighting Satan your concern is not fighting demons your concern is not fighting causes your concern is not fighting yokes are we together your concern is taking advantage of what we call the weapons of victory that have been given to you in Christ we are going to deal with the weapons what are they 
because the bible says to put the whole armor of god but there are weapons of victory that have been given to us weapon number one the power of the word weapon number two the power of the blood weapon number three the power of the name given to us the power of the word we'll deal with, with that when we go into administering deliverance the power of the word the power of the blood the power of the name all of them are not doing the same thing no deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is not is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it we are not fighting for it we have it already but now our assignment is to know how to engage it to make it manifest the bible says right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but jesus had to come physically and engage the tool of being a man walking in the earth walk dying shedding his blood going to hades resurrecting to make that which was finished become manifest today hallelujah are you learning now before we pray let me end tonight's discussion by teaching you something very powerful access points access points That means by what access points does Satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds, their bodies? Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible from cover to cover and by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of listening to people who really understand this subject. I have studied my Bible and I found out as complicated as Satan causes, yokes, altars, foundations, ancestry, and all these ills are, there are only three access points that Satan has to man and even the believer. Are you ready now? I may not go into in-depth of detail. We'll leave that one for next week because I want us to take the remaining time and pray. For all the sessions, we have some time to pray because there are people who, as you are hearing now, God is granting you that light and you are seeing that the strength of Satan is in my cooperating with him through ignorance, through, through deception. He will roar like a lion and act as if he will eat you out. When he does, ask him why he did not enter Eve and Adam immediately. Ask him why when the spirits left the madman, they did not enter another man. He should give you the explanation where did he keep his power that he could not simply pick any man just because you come from a village where there is that cause does not mean you can allow satan to just manipulate you like that now listen carefully you are about to learn something that is very very powerful access points please write Are you ready? There are three biblical access points. Number one, covenants. Aha, uh -huh. covenants. Write it down. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men sadly including believers covenants 
please just write it number two ignorance ignorance number three disobedience these are the three biblical access points and the only access points that satan has if you ever find satan manipulating a life a destiny a region a family i don't care how long i don't care how great believe me when i tell you it is one or more or all of these access points number one covenants number two disobedience ignorance number three of the three the most effective for satan is covenants do you know why because covenants have a transgenerational implication covenants ignorance and disobedience are all interrelated but covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline